Hello, everyone. Coming up, we are going to run over a 2020 update about Universal's dining plan for those of you who are considering that as an option for your Universal Orlando vacation. From the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal edition of The Diz Unplugged. This is episode 246 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is also brought to you by Dizboards.com. If you're looking for even more information to help you plan your Universal Orlando vacation, head over to Dizboards.com and join the discussion today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I'm your host, Craig Williams. Today, I'm joined alongside by my co-host, Rhino. Hello. And then back on the controls, we have Corey Fiascanaro. Hey, guys. Hey. So uh, we've got a fun episode for you today, and it is a very basic episode. We're just basically going to uh, said basically way too many times so far. Just basically. Uh, basically, we're just going to talk about Universal Dining Plan. And I want to start off by uh, adding in this caveat that uh, it has been a long time since I have actually actively participated in Universal's Dining Plan. This is more of just uh, going over the details and information for it uh, because the last time we did an episode that even included the dining plan that was back in 2018 it was in spring of 2018 we also talked about like express passes and a lot of the additional stuff you can add on to your universal vacation so it's been a little bit of a time since we've uh since we've talked about it and it's still information that people are interested in considering a lot of them out there are also going to walt disney world and considering the disney dining plan and know and love that thinking how can we make this work with universal in there and whether or not it's even a good deal at all so I think it's just important to kind of bring it back up, give it its own little episode and go over the details and minutia that is involved with that. And I will say, though, just personally, from the last time that we went out and experienced the dining plan, uh, I back then I did not believe it is worthwhile. And uh, I still am not a super huge fan of Universal's dining plan. I just I think the original version was better, but they were definitely losing a lot of money on that one. Yeah, the all you can eat uh, meal plan that they did have for a time being way back around the 2010s, right in that early era. But a whole it's, decade ago. Uh, yeah, a whole decade ago, you might even say, and maybe even beyond that, before I started visiting. But uh, Universal dining plan, I think, in my opinion, not to get into it too much before we we really dive into it. But to me, the idea of the Universal Dining Plan is the opposite of what makes Universal such a pleasure to visit. And that is that is that Universal is a place where you can literally show up with no planning, nothing involved like that, not a lot of hard decisions needing needed to be made. And the Dining Plan just adds on to me an extra step with it because now you're, you're buying this plan for the day per person in your group and then you you have all the universal theme park restaurants and stuff in city walk to an extent uh, but none of the hotels involved so dining plan can't be used there and then you have to look at it i paid a flat price for this universal dining plan and now i need to get my money value out of it too so now i have to look at what i'm buying and it to me it's just like it's just one of those situations where I know it's a lot easier to have this this piece of plastic that says this is what I got and now I can use it to redeem this stuff. But to me, it just adds in an extra level of unnecessary complication and something that can just be if you want if you want to walk in and order the most expensive thing. Yeah, maybe you could have saved money. And in the end, you can go on more vacations if you save money. But wait a it, minute. It's also that's how it works. <laughs> yeah. That is how it works. Wow, vacation but, planning. Who knew? Yeah, who knew? But uh, you know, ultimately, it's I'm. I would rather just spend the extra money in some circumstances rather than save. And I don't ever want to feel obligated buying into a dining plan of needing to get 
the most expensive things in order to get my value out of it. That's just not the type of person I am. I used to do that back in the day with the Disney dining plan. It was like the pride of walking into a restaurant and ordering the steak that was on the menu or the ribs or whatever was most expensive just to say, yeah, I got a great deal on this meal, but uh, that's not me anymore. And that's also a way that you can get really fat is <laughs> if you just constantly order these, these meat heavy items all the time but now let's take a step back and actually look at the universal dining plans that are offered and uh, this is this is a uh, quite the mix of availability here but basically there are two main options to the universal dining plan for people who are coming there is what is called the universal dining plan and the uh the issue with the Universal Dining Plan is that it's only available when you purchase a Universal Orlando vacation package. So no vacation package for you, no dice on this dining plan. And this dining plan is one that includes one full service meal, which is one entree, one non-alcoholic beverage, and one dining plan dessert. So when it says dining plan dessert, it does not mean look at the big dessert menu and you can select that massive piece of cake this is a a dessert made specifically for people on the dining plan that what, what i found back back when we tried it out was not uh not as appealing as just ordering a fun dessert that you really want a la carte uh, it also comes with one quick service meal and that includes one entree, which always comes with a side. Like if you're getting a burger, it's going to come with your fries. And then one non-alcoholic beverage. You get one snack, which can be anything from a food cart. It can be popcorn. It can be one of the, the frozen non-alcoholic drinks if you want it. And uh, you can get those at food carts and then quick service locations, cookies, uh, brownies, what what might have you there. And then you can also get an additional non-alcoholic beverage throughout the day from those same food carts or kiosks. Getting, mm. getting crazy there. And so it offers a lot, obviously, but uh, it, you know, one of the biggest things about it, one of the biggest issues is you have to be on that vacation package. So yeah. you didn't book the vacation package. It's not something that you can get at all. And I know that might be un more understandable for Walt Disney World side of people, but I don't, I don't, a lot of my friends that I know who go to Universal, a lot of times they're just booking hotels only and they have either annual passes or because annual passes can be very affordable or they, they have discounted tickets from another place or friends that get them tickets and ultimately they don't need the vacation package out of it so that kind of that kind of uh throws it all out there but i mean plenty of availability in terms of full service locations that you can can get food at obviously in the parks there's not a lot of options because in usf you only have finnegan's and lombards and ioa you only have confiscos and mythos and city walk you have a whole bunch more you have anahitos big fire bob marley uh, jimmy buffett's margaritaville pat o'brien's red oven pizza bakery which to me they call that full service really that's a quick service yeah, meal to me that's weird. in my opinion uh you have you have Vivo, you have Cowfish, you have Tusum, and NBC Sports uh, Grill and Brew. And I'm not going to go through and list all the quick service locations because quick service is, you, you know, you can throw a rock at anywhere and hit a quick service location in the parks and in City Walk and Volcano Bay. Well, with City Walk, you only have Breadbox and Hot Dog Hall of Fame, so not the same. But regardless, you can't use it at the Burger at Burger King's, the Whopper Bar. No, no. no. Wow. Now, the third parties are where you get tough in there. So, like, it's nice that you can use it at Margaritaville yeah. for the full service and Jimmy Buffett's and Pat O'Brien's. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, with the third party that just throws that extra issue into it. And that's why it also is – it makes it difficult with um, with the, the hotels because those are Lowe's hotels and – restaurants on there oh, it's, yeah, it's all lows sense, yeah. so uh the good news is like with the snacks the the snack that you get you that a lot of people always ask about it can i use it on butterbeer and yes you actually oh. can use it so that is a thing uh you can use it at florian fortescue's as well too, oh and, use it there yeah. <laughs> use it there but i had a question so like i'm not familiar with any of the universal dining plans or discounts at all just disney at Disney, of course, you know, I have tables in Wonderland, and that's just 
if you commit to Tables in Wonderland, that's kind of what you have. What kind of discount alternatives can you get to, to that? It, the, uh, the thing, uh, uh, the difference between Universal and Disney with that stuff is that Universal accepts the annual pass holder discount in a lot more locations oh, okay, than yeah. Disney does, yeah. including quick service and oh, full service. Every location. Yeah. I mean, I've literally never. I don't think I've ever had anyone say no. Yeah. And Maybe so, when like Harry Potter first opened for like the first month or something. I don't know. It was yeah. once, but that was it. That was not even at the dining. That was at that was for like merch, I think. So they they, they hold that true to the third parties too, because I know a lot of the third mm. parties at Disney don't accept it. Yeah, uh, anywhere at City Walk and uh, anywhere in the parks, definitely. As far as the resort yeah. dining locations, I'm pretty sure they take. Every, them we use them at. Every single one of our hotel reviews that we've done, cool. yeah. we've always had it. So it's if you're a pass holder, I said that weirdly. If you're a pass holder, then you definitely want to take advantage of your discount in that way. Uh, the big thing for me, again, as uh, I, I think it was the episode we did on Universal for uh, we did on Universal for non thrill seekers. And I don't know if it's been released yet, so I don't even want to commit to that much to that. But Fiasco brings up a point in that episode saying that as he has begun to to reintroduce himself to Universal, one of the things he noticed was that the pricing mm-hmm. on restaurants is actually very similar to what you would see at off property locations and not that same. Yeah, you're in a theme park, so we need to charge yeah. Yeah. extra prices. And that's definitely the case all, all across the board at universal. So, um, I, I, that's why I like dining at city walk a lot actually is cause it, I don't feel like it's, you know, sometimes when people come into town and they're like, Oh, we'll meet you for dinner. I'm like, ah, I do love meeting people, but it's sometimes it's like, I know I'm going to pay that extra five, 10 bucks to go to, you know, whatever. And it, him. it adds up, but at, at universal, I'm like, well, it's pretty on par with what I would go to not here. Exactly. So I'm pulling up right now, just so we can do a fair comparison. I'm pulling up the menu for Finnegan's, one of your options that you would have on the full service dining plan. Mm -hmm. And so the Finnegan's favorites is where a lot of their more expensive menu items are located. But for instance, with this restaurant, the most expensive item that you can get is in this restaurant for an entree is their beef tenderloin. And course pan seared filet medallions with a red wine sauce garlic mashed potatoes brussels sprouts carrots garnished with potato and onion web sounds delicious that entree is only 25 dollars and 49 cents yeah so when you consider that yeah you throw your drink onto that that's an extra three bucks and then you get your dining plan dessert so maybe you can round out this meal saying you spent 35 dollars on there but when you spent 63 dollars on the dining plan yeah then you have to look at okay, well, that was that was my full service. I still have to do a table service, and then I get my one snack and my one non-alcoholic beverage throughout the park. You're starting to get really close there in terms of your pricing to yeah. making it worth your value. And again, that's what I chose with the twenty-five dollar and forty-nine cent one. If you get, if I would look at the menu and choose like what do. I want here I of course fish and chips is always classic but one of my favorite dishes no jokes on this rhino but I love bangers and mash I there's nothing like a sausage to the mouth and throw that on I think in England they call it a banger in the mouth yeah a banger in the mouth and and (laughs) (laughs) uh, yeah and I screwed up all jokes on this uh, show are sponsored by Arrested Arrested Development Development, as you may or may not know at this point (laughs) but that $15.99 for your entree there so for the dollar. for Finnegan's, yeah, it's like that price in the Harry Potter in, <laughs> I know. in Leaky Cauldron. That's inter- that's I know. I'm surprised because you know normally when you do the sit down, you whatever you would have gotten yeah. a quick service would be a little more. If you order the stuff you want, you're going to be hard pressed I to get like that. It just adds this extra level of restriction that I don't like. Uh, uh, you know, that's the th- you you said it earlier in the episode. The beauty of Universal is not having to plan so far ahead of time for a lot of things that you that on the flip side you you know, and some people who love planning that can be uh, curveballs for them. But it it's like I I just don't want to then be like okay, we have to make sure that we go to this restaurant because this is where the most expensive food item is, and this is how we recoup this money. I'd rather just be like, let's see what there is here. Who knows? Yeah. And that's, I, you know, it's, there, there are sites out there who have, you know, just gone through pricing and figured out how much 
money you can save or lose on that. And, uh, you know, it's so uh, you can you can definitely save money in the long run. It just feels like an effort, though, to find the way to save the money. You know what I mean? For something that just across the board should save money. Yeah. So it feels like it's something you have to be careful with. And so I don't know. I, and having not experienced it personally ever, I I don't know that this is something that I'm even interested in pursuing. But exactly, no, I I completely agree with that too. So that's the full service person on it. Full Persian? service person on that. The next one is the Universal Dining Plan Quick Service, and this I feel like is a little bit easier in order to save money on your vacation. This is available to anyone. It doesn't matter if you're staying there. It doesn't matter if you're just coming over for the day. Any person can buy the quick service uh, universal dining plan. And this includes your one quick service meal, which again includes one entree and one non-alcoholic beverage. It includes one snack, again, like we said before, with the full service and your one non-alcoholic beverage. And this is $25.99 add-on tax to it as well. So, And then you'll get your price on that uh, for adults. And that can be pre-purchased online or then it can also be uh, purchased it can be purchased the day of when when you actually arrive there and 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 show up to the park if you decide you know what yeah i want to do that then you can uh you can definitely do that and uh i apologize i don't i can't find the price for the child on that i'm gonna i didn't write it down ahead of time and again this is the pricing that we saw as of the time that uh, child right now is starting from seventeen ninety nine, so as of the time of looking at that, that is the the pricing on the dining plan for that. So, uh, you know, it's it, I, I don't think twenty five ninety nine nor seventeen ninety nine is unfair. I think seventeen ninety nine might be a little bit more unfair for a kid, but yeah. twenty five ninety nine. For an adult, I feel like you can go a, a little bit of a longer way with that. And if you give me one second. So, so if you go to like Leaky Cauldron and you were to order your meal and, and then you want one of the drinks, the non-alcoholic drinks would be like the fizzing otter juice or the lemon squeezy McSqueezerson. I don't know what they're – I forget the names of them right now, but – um you know that like those drinks are probably six or seven dollars. Yeah, I believe those would fall under your snack category. Uh. So if I'm correct on that, I believe that could fall into your snack. I'm not like, and again, I apologize. I haven't tried to use it with those. Maybe you could get away with a non-alcoholic, but I'm pretty sure because they mentioned specifically in the terms that uh, that like a freeze, a freezy drink, a slushy would be considered a snack, okay. not a non-alcoholic drink. So yeah, I'm a, those if are in the someone, between, yeah. yeah, and I apologize. That's something I tried to research. I just couldn't find a complete answer on it without going and asking and looking like that weirdo. So if anyone has that information in our, and can leave it in our comments below or reach out to us and send it, I would love to know so I can you know, re-update this and confirm with people so they know on that. But uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it is a valid question. Thank you very much for for that question as well, Rhino. But and that gave me time to pull up the uh, lunch and dinner menu at Leaky Cauldron, which was what I was trying to do. And so to give you an idea, of Leaky Cauldron, that's obviously the place I think we would recommend more than any other to go to eat if you're at Universal Studios Florida. You'll uh, get a banger in the mouth there. What you was? can get a bangers and mash there as well, too. A banger in the mouth. Uh, Rhino said it was very close in terms of price to what you would find at Finnegan's, and he's not wrong with that. It, at Leaky Cauldron, that same, if I'm still in the mood for more bangers and mash for my second meal of the day. Uh, <laughs> Just only sausage yeah. and potatoes is what he eats. Uh, <laughs> definitely time. healthy, yeah. But in that circumstance, bangers and mash there is thirteen ninety nine. Oh, so geez, yeah. But that being said, thirteen ninety nine, you still get your drink there as well too. And then once you add on, uh, you know what you you have your your drink. And actually, that's that's a good question. In the Wizarding World, where you don't have soda, yeah, because that's I why guess they those, probably would be like pumpkin juice, maybe or well, pumpkin, yeah, pumpkin fizz is a thing or something. Yeah, because they come from a tap the same way the soda would. That's or like some of them do, yeah. not all of them, but like I just. I don't know. Yeah, butter beer is a snack. I mean, butter beer is eight dollars now, so that's a Jeez. snack. But mm-hmm. the the drinks you were talking about, the specialty non alcoholic drinks, yeah, they're five forty nine 
for them and pumpkin juice is 4.99 so i feel like that's still fair so if if you can take advantage of those then you know you're with 13.99 plus that you're already you're getting close to making out for the day with with something like that and if you go with the most expensive thing you can order for yourself there which is the fisherman's pie at 16.99 or the fish and chips at 16.99 really? you know fisherman's you're pie, the most expensive. you're getting you're getting uh quickly you're getting pretty much up there that you can match that 25.99 for the day so then it kind of comes into the next round is will you will you want to eat those uh will you want to eat those extra snacks and stuff through yeah. the day or are you fine with with just what you have and that's that's another question you have to ask yourself but i think i think with the quick service i think you can make it worth your value that's too it, stressful for me again though it's i just I hate having to think about that sometimes it's just like i'm in the theme park i'm hungry where are we going but like i guess this is kind of you've already planned it out beforehand so if you're a planner and you're like i know we're all going to dine here and we have decided that dining at the leaky cauldron is where we're going to make it's going to make it work and it's going to be a discount and we're having a harry potter day that day then awesome yeah so the it d- definitely sounds like a more a better yeah. option than the other one though yeah i quick service i think is a is definitely a better option. But then, like I said, you still have to do the math on it because you can still lose money. But I think it's easier to come out ahead on that one. But then you have Mm -hmm. to look at the next level of convenience on it. And that's how you redeem your dining plan. So uh, with, you know, with Walt Disney World, you have your magic band and it's all connected to your My Disney experience. Very easy. With, With Universal's dining plan, you, it's not, it's not connected to anything. There's nothing to connect it to. So you have a separate, a separate card that is there for you. So that way that's how you redeem it. And so now you're keeping track of an extra, extra article and, and some yeah. theme parks when people don't want to keep track of anything and you give that to your kid to say, Oh, go and buy that. And they lose it on the way back. Then you're out your card on there. So it's, it's a little bit, trickier i don't like that added extra into it that you can't be so easy going yeah. with it i i don't like i don't like extra i don't like to be weighed down yes it fit in a wallet but it's also not it's not ideal the other thing that kind of like with just dining plans in general that kind of swayed me away from them in general is that uh sometimes i don't want to get the most expensive thing on the menu yeah but if i have right. a dining plan i feel like i should you're obligated yeah yeah yes there there is a feeling of obligation like we already talked about with that you you feel like you have to and you you really shouldn't have to uh the theme parks are supposed to be fun and again if you are that person if you look at the menus online universal lists all their menus online for the most part not for like the carts and stuff but for for your meals they list those menus online start to do your research ahead of time looking at what you're you're planning on getting and and look at those prices and and start to do the math yourself because if you're saying well yeah at leaky cauldron i'm looking at this menu i know i have to eat there and i want the fish and chips when you start looking at that price you're going to say okay I can definitely get my value out of that. Add on the fact that later I want to also go to Florian Fortescue's and get that ice cream. Ooh. And, you know, maybe throughout later in the day saying I'm dehydrated, I want to throw a Powerade on. There you have your drink. Then you can start getting there very, very quickly. So you can really make it worth your value. But if if you're not going to do that research ahead of time and you just want to show up on day of, I, I would say it's better to not risk losing money on it. Okay, so you guys have mentioned this ice cream place a handful of times now. Mm-hmm. What is the deal with that? You just don't like dairy, though. I, I, when, when it comes to ice cream, that's all out the window. I will eat all ice cream. This place, you got to get it. You got to get the, the blondie, the, oh my gosh, what is it? I can't even remember it right now. The blondie and the apple crumble are my two favorites in there. Yeah. It's all, it's in the Wizarding World, so think about how, like, Birdie Bot's every flavor bean kind of takes jelly beans and introduces weird flavors. Yeah. Same idea with ice cream, but not disgusting ones. There's yeah. not earwax yeah. ice cream and mm. stuff. Like they have one of the ice creams that I love in Florian Fortescue's the most is their Earl Grey and Lavender 
which is nice and florally and very light. Uh, just it's not like a palate cleanser, but you don't. It's just it's a nice, interesting flavor that you don't get often. Um, it's like a chili chocolate. Yeah, the chili chocolate one, which I like spicy Mexican chocolate. So like that is the ice cream equivalent of that. And you already mentioned the blondie and the apple crumble. It's like it's like when Brewster's does like specialty menu items where it's extra crap thrown in that obviously make you fatter in the long run. It's like that's what Florian Fortescue's kind of is all the time. There's just interesting, unique flavors. It kind of reminds me the way you're describing it of uh, salt and straw. Uh, not quite on that level, but I would say like, I feel that how I feel when I'm done with like salt and straw, I feel that same kind of okay. like, I would wow, s- I, mean, I had some special ice cream. Say if you want to equate it to a place at Walt Disney World, maybe closer to like Ample Hills okay. yeah. in that same realm. Because I think about the ooey bo- gooey butter cake being yeah. similar to the one I like, but it's yeah. a must. It's a must. I gotta go. Must. Yeah, I, gotta I, go I think it is a must. So, uh. So that's honestly, those are the two main dining plans. I'll just mention real quick as well, too, that not your final options on there. There's also another quick service dining plan that includes a uh, a Coca-Cola freestyle souvenir cup. And this is what Universal considers one of their best values. It's $34.99 plus tax for adults per day on that one. And you also get your fr- your souvenir freestyle cup that you can take around to all the machines and get your drinks all day. You can also buy the souvenir cup by itself uh, for Coke freestyle, and that's sixteen ninety nine for the cup. So that's an option too if you want it. But, uh, you know, the, mainly I think the thing people look at is if they're staying on a vacation package, that regular dining plan, or then on the quick service one, which is open to more people, is it worth it? I'd lean to say if you like to do that pre planning, give it a try with the quick service, see if you like it or not. With the full service one, it's just, I feel like you you really have to take advantage of expensive entrees to make it worthwhile and expensive snacks and go expensive to really get it. So yes, you can make it, you can make a savings on all of them, but is it worth the extra hassle? Mm. I don't think so. Not for me, but if you like it, let us know in the comments below and let us know what you think is the best value on some of those snacks and drinks and all the extras we asked you to help us with. So thank you so much guys for uh sitting here and going through this with me Mm -hmm. thank you everyone out there for listening and watching of course if you need extra information disunplug.com home of our show notes page for the show and all the others on the disunplug podcast network if you're watching this on youtube go ahead subscribe hit the bell so you get notified when we have new videos hit that thumbs up and then leave us comments and questions down below and then if you're watching this on not watching if you're listening to this on apple Podcasts, stitcher spotify if you can subscribe to us please do so and then leave us review and ratings please 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 but thank you again guys for having this conversation thank you out there to everyone else for uh getting something out of this episode hopefully and we'll be back with you next week for another episode of the disunplugged universal edition but until then remember we still haven't changed the name